Hey, my name is Jason from Walrus Audio. I just wanted to come and talk a little bit about the development of the Mako Series D1 Delay. The Mako Series marks a new chapter for Walrus Audio. Um, we started thinking uh, around a year ago about how we can sort of expand um, our product offering and what we could do different, how we could push the envelope some. And so we started dreaming about this pedal and we're really excited to, to bring it to you and show it to you. Just wanted to take a minute and talk about the pedal in more detail, um, how it came about, um, what some of the controls do, and sort of, you know, some of the basic functionality we'll just dive into a little bit. You know Walrus, if you've been around for a little bit, this doesn't look anything like a normal Walrus pedal. Um, that's one way we're just kind of sh shaking things up, changing things up with this release. We came up with this design uh, that's kind of got a, a bit of a sloped face. I don't know how well you can see that, but um, it kind of puts the controls at a little more of an ergonomic angle so you can see things a little bit better when you're above it. Um, and we think it looks really cool. We're really excited about how it came out. The D1 is built off of an analog device's Shark DSP. So. Um, we have a lot of processing horsepower is really what that equates to. Really pristine audio quality when we want it, um, but of course with software we're able to kind of manipulate the audio and degrade it in fun ways. So you can run the D1 in different input output configurations. Um, you can run it mono in and mono out, you can run stereo in and stereo out, or you can run mono in and dual mono out. Another thing that we wanted to do is um, allow the ability to control our pedals with MIDI. So this is the first, our first step into that as well. So if you come around and look at the top of the D1, um, you'll see a MIDI input and output. And this is, allows you to control um, any of the controls on the face uh, with MIDI. And you can also switch presets as well as set the tempo of the delay with MIDI clock. So the way I like to use it, um, I have a Morningstar MC6 MIDI controller, which I love. You guys should check them out. Um, and I also have a Sela Quartz V2. You should check them out as well. It's a MIDI clock. Um, and so I run both of those things to control the D1. Um, the Morning Star is strictly for me controlling presets. And then uh, the Quartz is just stepping through a set list of preset tempos. So on the fly, I could choose uh, maybe like a digital sound with a dotted eighth division and quickly go to um, like a vintage type tone with a quarter note to sit behind some chords. There's other things you can do on the D1 with MIDI, um, but changing presets and changing delay time uh, remotely is um, really powerful and it opens up a lot of additional functionality on a pedal um, like this. Um, let's take a deeper dive in and let's look at some of the controls on the top here. So we've got um, usual suspects on the top, time knob, repeats, uh, and mix control. So time adjusts the delay time like you'd expect. Um, I think we've got around, you can go all the way down to around 60 milliseconds uh, up to 2000. Feedback, you can go from one repeat as you'd expect up to near infinite. Um, and then mix is a full wet dry mix. So all the way uh, in this position is gonna be full dry and then if, up here is full wet. Um, right around uh, anywhere between like noon and two o'clock, you'll kind of find 50-50, and, and it depends on which program you're using, um, but it'll allow you to raise and lower sort of that, that ratio of, of dry to wet. Um, if we come down here, uh, the tweak knob works with the switch here underneath it. So this allows us to manipulate um, from the top of the pedal, three different parameters for each program without having to um, hold a switch down or um, get into some sort of a layered menu. So it's really simple to use. All you do is just move the tweak switch to the effect that you want to control, whether that be mod, tone, or age, and then use the tweak knob to manipulate each one of those effects. Uh, so with the program knob here, you can select between the five algorithms. Uh, you know, I find myself using just one or two algorithms on a lot of delay pedals that I've owned. And so we came up with these five and we really feel like you can cover a lot of ground, especially when you incorporate um, things like the tweak knob where you can really get kind of in the details and, and fine tune each one of the, the program sounds. Um, and then as well as the attack knob. So let's move over there and look at this. Uh, this is uh, a volume envelope that's applied to your guitar signal feeding the delay line. So as you turn this up, it takes longer for your guitar to swell in to the delay line. So you can kind of remove some of those 
uh, the, the transients or the attack from your playing as you turn this up. So at really high settings, um, you can play some long sort of drug out notes um, with high repeat levels and, and higher mix levels and get some really ethereal, kind of really cool soundscape uh, type sounds. We came up with five um, different programs here that we feel like cover a lot of um, sonic bases when it comes to delay. Um, so the first is digital, and what I'm looking for in a digital algorithm is just an exact crystal clear recreation of my tone. Um, I usually am using digital to get real rhythmic sounds, um, and this is, works really well. Um, we are really happy with the, the digital sound here. Um, of course, you can manipulate it with mod, tone, and age like the other ones, uh, like the other programs, but um, you're really able to get a really nice clear sound with this digital uh, algorithm. The next one's mod. Um, so, um, like, I like the crystal clear end of things, but I also like modulation. Um, so, with this uh, program in particular, we kind of went after a random type modulation. And so that coupled with um, a particular type of filtering done on the tone knob on the mod program, you can get some really cool um, underwater sort of uh, random vibrato sounds out of the D1. Um, and so that was the inspiration for the mod algorithm. The vintage algorithm, um, you know, we're all gonna know and love old vintage delays, whether that be tape delays or whether it be bucket brigade delays. Analog delays um, are always gonna have their place. Um, and so <clears throat> we were just inspired by a lot of sounds we heard there and came up with the vintage algorithm here. So you can get um, sort of darker, murkier sounds here with uh, age turned up and, and tone turned down. Uh, and add some mod in there and get a really nice delay to sit behind chords. So something that works really well with um, rhythm playing. So the next one is dual. And so when you think about um, a stereo out delay pedal, you, my mind typically goes to thinking about, well, we need to have the ability to have multiple time divisions and kind of get that cool um, rhythmic, you know, the classic quarter note and dotted eighth note that everybody loves. Uh, including myself, and we were able to do that, and then we also did a couple other um, time configurations. So you've got eighth note and quarter note triplet, and then you have quarter note and quarter note triplet. So you can do some different time feels in dual, but if that's connected in stereo, one amp will receive one time division, the other amp receives the other time division. Um, and then if it's in, uh, connected in mono out, you still will hear both, but of course in the one amp that you have connected. And then last is reverse. <clears throat> Another effect that, um, that I've just grown to love um, started with uh, DD5, like a, probably a lot of you um, started with the DD5 and kind of got into reverse sound that way. Um, and so we wanted, we just, we felt like we had to put it on the D1. A couple of the things we have on the D1 um, is a division switch, usual suspect, you'd always expect to see that, or I would, with a tap tempo delay. Um, quarter note, eighth note, and dotted eighth divisions. Um, and then we also have presets. So. Um, you've got three banks using this, this switch here. You've got a bank A, B, and C, and each one holds three presets. And um, you know which preset you're on by looking at which bank you're in, and then looking at the color of the tap LED. So that LED will be red, green, or blue to indicate which preset you're on in the bank that you have selected. So it's pretty simple. You can recall up to nine presets with no MIDI device uh, connected. And then if you're using MIDI, uh, like a MIDI controller, for example, then you have access to 127. And um, I'd really like to shake the hand of the man that's using 127 delay presets, or woman. So a couple other things we have on the D1 that are sort of set and forget user preferences uh, would be things like bypass mode, uh, tempo mode, and MIDI channel. So you need to assign your MIDI channel so that you know um, which channel to, to talk to the D1 on. Um, that's pretty easy to do. Just jump in the manual and you'll see the procedure for that. Um, selecting which, pre, or which tempo mode you want to use is, is also simple. That will allow you to use global tempo or preset tempo. So you can have a preset recall a tempo that was stored with the preset or you can choose to use global tempo mode uh, in which case you'll, your, your delay time won't change as you change presets. That's the mode that I use. And then the last one of those uh, would be bypass mode. So you can run this pedal in true bypass mode, 
Um, you can run it in uh, DSP plus Drew Bypass, which is gonna allow you to have trails, but then after the trails have, have trailed off, the pedal will switch to um, bypass the effect with relays, just like in true bypass mode, but it's a very fast change, and if you're playing, you're, you're probably not gonna notice it. And then you can run it in DSP bypass mode, which will lock the relays on, and then you will be able to um, hear your trails just like you'd expect. If you wanna connect the D1 in mono in, stereo out, you'll need to use DSP bypass mode to handle the routing of your dry signal. One other hidden feature on the D1 is uh, a feedback ramp. So if you, while you're playing, if you hold down the bypass switch, um, it'll, it'll ramp the, the repeats knob up to full. And then when you release it, uh, the repeats setting will go back to wherever the preset had it before. Um, and this will let you drag out echoes in different moments of a song maybe. Um, so just allow some creative expression over that knob at any time you want. To scroll through presets on the D1, you just click both switches simultaneously and that will scroll through the presets that are in the bank that you have selected with the bank switch. So it'll go red, green, blue, and then back to red. If you want to jump to another set of presets, then you'll go to whichever bank you want to access with the switch and then you can do the same thing, red, green, blue in that bank. The last thing on the face of the pedal are the switches on the bottom and the LEDs. So you've got your bypass switch to turn the pedal on and off, and you've got your tap switch to set to tap in your tempo or set your delay time. Um, and then those are used in conjunction to scroll through presets. If you click them both at the same time, you'll go to the, the next preset in the bank that you're selected. Yeah, so again, we're all really excited about this new series of pedals from Walrus Audio, the Mako series. Um, we've, we've put a lot of hours into this, we've put a lot of sweat into this. Everybody is really excited around the shop. We've been playing it for the last several months. Um, check out walrusaudio.com for more details. Find us on social media, and we're excited to get it in your hands.